This was in an Outside the Lines anthology. It's called A Wannabe Fantasy. I told my shrink I want to be a back warmer, sit on a bitch pad behind a biker guy, wrap my arms round his ape hanger grip, straddle his bar hopper bike on Friday nights, ride with a big bearded chromosexual guy, cruise the big road to nowhere. I want to goggle the horizon, eat asphalt, let my puppies hang loose, wear black leather chaps and a purple skid lid. I don't think you do, he said. Yes, I do. I love bikers, especially the bugs. The bigger, uglier the guy, the harder they try, the better they make me feel. Told him I rode hard and long with a few before I started these confession sessions. He said, we have to stop now. I found a new therapist, and she loves to listen to my biker chick fantasies, rides along with me, always asks, how does that make you feel? <laughs> we all want to fit in and, uh, you know, we write poetry, we come up to the open mic and uh, I encourage everyone to do that and when it's the first time they read at one of my venues, I call it a virgin read. So uh, it, it breaks the ice. So it's another icebreaker poem. Uh, it's called Fitting In. Boys liking girls with big breasts send me crying to mom. When words can't uplift, she offers me a pair of foam rubber falsies. Underneath the bra, the erectile nipples look real and spectacular. Things improve but are far from perfect like my once flawless reputation. <laughs> Seems I don't feel fondling during slow dances. I'm labeled cold but unresponsive. On a date with a lifeguard, I tuck the far breasts into my bikini top, jump off a high dive, the buoyant bee cups pop out, surface before I do. I scoop one in each hand and I breaststroke out of the pool. Pray no one notices. At a beach party, out of the water for hours, I press arms tight round my bust, water squeezes out, gushes down, puddles at my feet. I change my look. Wear ruffled blouses, baggy sweaters, empire dresses to enhance my bust line. I learn non-contact dances, the swim, stroll, the twist. I toss my foam rubber falsies into a bucket. My brother's friends use them to wash mom's car. They make great sponges. I go to a lot of workshops, and if, if anyone has been in a workshop, they know that they, they really chop your poems up. They say things like, what I would like to see in this poem, and I always think, why don't you write your own effing poem? <laughs> but anyway, so, <laughs> so I, um, I was going through a book of form poems, and I enjoyed your, your, your lessons poem, because that's a form poem of sorts. And I found this obscure form of poetry, and it's called macaronic verse. Does anyone here know what a macaronic verse is? John Skelton and the dandies like kind of perfected this. So I gave it a shot. I brought the rules to the poetry workshop and, and I, I gave them the rules of the poem and I, I gave them the poem and rendered them speechless without one critique because how could you critique this and you'll hear. <laughs> <clears throat> it's called My Macaronic Grill and it's a macaronic verse. Estudio lavoro de la troubadour al dente macaronicus left me craving more. So I googled macaronic verse, a server of the fair, for recipes to follow, amaramalous poets share. Summa difficultatis burlesque misconjugated, some Latin mixed with English, summa ubi sububi rated. <laughs> I found a dandy ancient skeleton, left over foreign verse, Qual cosa no comprende, his key made matters worse. La lingua de mi padre, the way dad spoke at home, I created macaronic grill, solamente on my own. Prima, try colore salad, my favorite insalata, della casa specialty, mangiai before the pasta. Minestra, soup, del giorno, a hearty minestrone, Troppo mangiare, I felt like a gavone. 
Secunde come pasta, linguini, frutte mar, con piccolini gamborini, beva vino from Liguria. Imported fungi, mushrooms, porcini lightly grilled, minuscuno vongole con formaggio and dill. Digestive experimentare, idioms interspersed. Macaroni sono buone, questo macaronic burst. <laughs> Now we go with the food. I, by the way, I took your recommendation. I ate upstairs before I came down, and it was good. So we'll do some food stuff. I traveled a lot to Italy for my job. I'm a customs broker in international air freight, and Italy was my territory. This is called a bowl of sardinas fritas. Deep fried eyes stare back at me. Spying eyes wait, watch the newbie tackle the catch of the day. The specialty, della casa, ordered by my Milanese host. I wedge the smallest between thumb and forefinger, close eyed, slip it into my mouth, pretend it's a French fry. Mario asks, do you like? Tells me he and his papa fished for sardines when he was young. I swallow his words with my appetizer, both taste so familiar. Both linger like memories of my dad lowering mesh traps on the side of a footbridge, baiting crab cages with fresh caught killies, waiting for just the right moment to pull them up, filled with blue claws clinging to half-eaten bait, catching a bushelful before day's end. Yes, Mario, I like. <laughs> I was in a small town, um, I was on a business trip and for the weekend I went with some friends to Sestri Levanti, which is on the Mediterranean, it's, uh, uh, it's a little past Genoa, and um, this is something that happened, it's called, you, you don't speak Italian, you'll get it at the end, you speak Italian, it's called Sagra della Lumache. Grills atop barrels in a piazza, steaming pots, sizzling skewers, lights crisscross narrow streets, reminds me of the feast of San Gennaro. I ask, what saint are they celebrating? No saint, says Francesco, a monster from the sea. Comes when it rains, climbs over everything, calls it Lumaca. I close the window and ask him to close his. We drive past the town, dine in a grotto, eat our way through antipasto, primo, segundi, wine with each course, formaggio, frutta, caffè, and dolce. I toast my Milanese friend with a digestivo. He tells me it will help me sleep. That night, at the seaside hotel, thunder and heavy rain rattle windows, lightning illuminates the room, and I imagine Lumaca emerging from the sea, climbing up the balcony, coming for me. I race to the window, pull the chains to close the shutters, fumble for the light, and reach for my travel dictionary. I squint at the small print, finger the word Lumaca. A slug, a snail, the fair of the snails, Sagra della Lumache, a strange feast indeed. <laughs> <laughs> to come here, I had a, uh, MapQuest told me to take uh, the uh, BQE and then you have to go over the, uh, the bridge, two bridges. The Williamsburg well, there's another bridge you go over. So this is called Shopping Downtown, which is, my mom was Polish, my dad was Italian. So, Shopping Downtown. Kaskiatsko Bridge, he'd shout as we drove over on our way to the Lower East Side for the best buys in the city. Kosciuszko, mom snap, correcting his pronunciation. Crossing the Williamsburg Bridge meant we were almost there. First stop, the Knickerbocker Mushroom Company on Rivington Street, where they'd bargain for a pound of Polish mushrooms. At Essex Market, I'd slide on the sawdust floor while they selected jewel-like candied fruit and unshelled nuts. It was there I first tasted halva for the first time. It lingered on my tongue like heavy cream, and I wanted more, more than the small slivers of samples. 
Mom said it was too expensive, way above our means. A man on Hester Street let me pick pickles from a barrel of brine, snapped off bits for tasting, wiped his hands on an apron, handed me the paper bag, collected the coins from Dad. I loved the warm, sweet smell of Orchard Street. On a stool in the corner of a leather goods store, I watched Mom help Dad find a leather jacket he wouldn't buy that day. He'd tuck it away, go back early the day after the Sabbath. Sunday, while we waited at home, Dad stood alone leaning on the black and white sign waiting for that store to open, finding the jacket in his so-called secret hideaway, bargaining for the best deal of the day, naming his price. Said he'd never pay a penny more, never make an offer twice. They can't lose the first sale of the day, he'd say. It's bad luck, the way they do business. He couldn't afford a higher price, did business his way. Came home wearing the jacket and said, reach in my right pocket. Gave it a gentle pat. There between smooth satin lining and waxed paper wrap, a chunk of halva he saved with money he bought, with money he saved, shopping on the Lower East Side, not far from the Kostushko Bridge. <laughs> Before the end, I used to go to uh, the city a lot, the Fillmore. Before the end, we dined on miso soup, tofu, drank rice wine, spent a week's pay, raced time across city streets, dodging scalpers and peddlers, hawking tickets and more. High in mezzanine seats at the Fillmore East, immersed in a psychedelic glow, the never-ending Joshua Light so Show seemed so surreal. We danced on end rhymes, latent lyrics in a labyrinth of love's fire. And when the music was over and butterflies no longer screamed, they turned out the lights, my friend, the end. <laughs> I guess I'll end with us on 8th Street, on 8th Street. I remember days and nights on 8th Street before war took you away. I remember rummaging through antiques I want to hold your hand streaming through speakers in every store. We were so in love, always holding hands. I often stop and think about that night outside the 8th Street Cinema, humming Samba Sarava, theme from a man and a woman. It was Thursday, April 4th. Our song and dance ended with news Martin Luther King was dead. We embraced strangers, sobbed, cried, washed down bitter tears with an orange Julius. Next door to Azuma, patchouli incense crept into night. Black lights, day glow green and orange, a toke of reality on psychedelic 8th Street. We got lost, never found our way, but I know I will never lose affection for all these things that came before. Wow. Thank you. <laughs>